Hello, you're watching New Vision TV News. My name is Lynn Komjisha. Here's what's coming up in our bulletin. In news around Uganda, Museveni has rooted for infrastructure development at the Japan-Africa summit that has kicked off. The ninth archbishop has been elected. And the Uganda Airlines made its first commercial flight today. In news around the East African region, my Wood State Speaker has dismissed impeachment reports. In news around the world, the first bishop has been ordained in China under a Vatican deal. And in our special report today, we meet Quen District seasoned Irish potato farmer. Hello there once again. My name is Lynn Komjisha. Now, in news around Uganda, the Tokyo International Conference on African Development kicked off today at the Pacific Tokohama Convention Center in Japan with the Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, rallying. Japanese investors who aggressively inject money into Africa's infrastructure development. Speaking at the event, President Yorim Seveni said for the investment trajectory in Africa to make meaning, there must be double investment into transport and energy sector in order to boost economic development. The three-day 7th TICAD conference, which ends August 30th, is organized under the theme Advancing Africa's Development Through People, Technology and Innovation. News coming in from Kampala, Bishop Samuel Stephen Kazimba of Mitiana Desis has been announced as Bishop-elect of the Church of Uganda. On March 1st, 2020, the 57-year-old will officially replace the Most Reverend Stanley Tagali as the Church's ninth Archbishop. Earlier today, the House of Bishops, the body that elects the Archbishop, convened inside the provincial office of the Church of Uganda in Namirembe to elect Ntagali's successor. From a pool of top contenders, including Bishop Sheldon Mwesigov and Kole Diasis and Bishop Samuel George Bogdan, Gele Egesa from Bukedi, the House of Bishops picked Kazimba as the one to take over the church leadership to many. He will be seen as a surprise choice. Because without that, we can do a lot of nothing. But where God is, the impossible will become possible. Amen. I want to invite you all to continue praying for us and pray for our chief bishop that you will end finally pray and also the past to begin. Also pray for the diocese of Omitiana. Mm -hmm. They never expected this, uh, but now we have to go through a process. Mm -hmm. they, they are, are, it, it's, a, it's a, a good shock, but I pray that uh, you pray for them. Thank you so much. Still in Kampala, the House of Bishops, who consists of all active diocesan bishops and assistant bishops today, elected Mitiana Bishop Samuel Stephen Kazimba Mugalu as the new archbishop elect. But who is he? We have a report. Mitiana Diocese Bishop Samuel Stephen Kazimba Mgalu has been elected the new Archbishop of the Church of Uganda. He was born on August 15, 1962 at Gulamanaja in Buikwe district to Beswero Kadu and Jessica Nanyonjo. Kazimba grew up with his mother at Machindia Kampala suburb. He went to Gakuwa Muno and Lusaka Primary School for his primary education and attended Seta College Mwanyanjiri for his high school education. Kazimba is married to Margaret Nagaibulia. The two have four children. He was trained as a lay leader at Baskerville Theological College in Gogwe in 1985 and posted to Lugazi St. Peter's Church. In 1994 to 1996, he completed his diploma in theology at Bishop Taka College 
and posted to Catete Parish as parish priest in 1997. In 1999, he was then transferred to Mukono Cathedral as vicar. He was made acting provost of Mukono Cathedral by Bishop Michael Senyimba after his provost, Canon Matov, had been made bishop of Central Uganda Diocese. Between 2004 and 2007, Kazima pursued his directorate of ministry at Western Seminary in the U.S. He was made a canon in 2007 by Bishop Elia Paul Luzinda Chizito. He became the fourth bishop of Mitiana Diocese on the 26th of October 2008, replacing Bishop Dr. Dastan Copriano Bukenya. August 28, 2019, Kazimba has been elected as new Archbishop of the Church of Uganda. The 57-year-old will officially replace the Most Reverend Stanley Tagali as the Church's ninth Archbishop in March 2020. I want to call the bishops, I want to call the clergy, I want to call the lay people, the Mukubilis are here for the province. I want to call the lay readers and I want to call the government of Uganda and all the cultural officers or cultural leaders, especially here, to give us the support we need. News from Entebbe. Uganda Airlines this morning made its first commercial flight from Entebbe to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport with eight passengers on board. The airline, which departed from Entebbe Airport 6.05 a.m., touched down at JKIA at exactly 7 a.m., five minutes ahead of the scheduled landing. The language used on board was English and none of the local languages. Closing off on news around Uganda is a story from Wakiso District. The Minister of State for Primary Education, Rosemary Senide, also District Woman Member of Parliament, has appealed to NRM women leaders to play a pivotal role in educating their children. This was during the Wakiso NRM Women Leaders Conference organized by Wakiso RDC Rose Chirabida at St. Michael International School, Wakiso. Senide asserted that education is an investment that parents enjoy in the future time. Now for news around the East African region. In Kenya, a wheelchair user has hit out at Ethiopian Airlines saying he was abandoned by airport staff who refused to help him board a flight leaving the Kenyan capital Nairobi for the U.S. In a series of tweets and Facebook posts, author and disability rights campaigner Harun Hassan said he was treated insensitively with one member of staff impolitely telling him there's no provision for a disabled person who is traveling alone. The Ethiopian airline later apologized to Hassan and offered him a business class travel on condition he deletes the social media posts which he declined to do. In South Sudan, the Speaker of South Sudan's Maiwut State has dismissed reports claiming he has been impeached and replaced from his parliamentary role, pointing accusing fingers at the incumbent governor. Shuwal D. Kir, Speaker of Maiwut State Transitional Legislative Assembly, told the Sudan Tribune yesterday that reports claiming he was removed from his position were advancing the activities of the governor and his group whose activities are not based on the constitution and guiding principles. Now in news around the world, in Sudan, the country is due to announce members of a new cabinet faced with a mountain of challenges after months of unrest including rebuilding the economy and ending internal conflicts. Newly appointed Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok will name his key picks from nominees put forward by the Forces for Freedom and Change, an umbrella group that led protests against veteran President Omar al-Bashir and the generals who ousted him in April. The cabinet announcement comes after a joint civilian military ruling body was sworn in last week to steer the country through a three-year transitional period. 
In the Gambia, the country's mourning the first president of Gambia, Dauda Jawara, who died Tuesday at the age of 95. In online comments, President Barrow described Jawara's death as a great loss to the country in particular and humanity in general. Jawara is the first president of the Gambia following independence from Britain. A state funeral will be held Thursday. Jawala, a Glasgow trained veterinary doctor, led the former British colony to independence on 18th February 1965 until July 1994, when his reign was brought to an end by a bloodless military coup led by Yaya Jameh, who went on to rule the tiny West African state for 22 years. In Mali, more than 1,000 trucks loaded with merchandise were blocked at the entrance to Mali's capital, Bamako, Tuesday, the fourth day of protests against the poor state of the country's roads. AFP reporters witnessed a line of trucks snaking about a dozen kilometers along the road that leads from the Kati toll station, some 15 kilometers outside the capital, to the countries west and beyond, to Senegal and Mauritania. The protest started on August 23rd in the western city of Case when hundreds of residents blocked the main bridge over the Senegal River. Now from China, a Chinese Catholic bishop has been ordained with the joint approval of the Pope and Beijing for the first time under an agreement intended at encouraging a rapprochement between China and the Holy See. China's roughly 12 million Catholics have for decades been split between a government-run association whose clergy were chosen by the Atheist Communist Party and an official underground church loyal to the Vatican. But under the terms of the deal agreed in September last year, both Beijing and the Vatican will now have a say in appointing Catholic bishops. China's official church, the Chinese Catholic Patriotic Association, said Yao Shun was ordained as bishop of the Diocese of Lankwab in North China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region Monday. The law in China requires priests and bishops to register and align with the country's official charge. In Japan, two people were confirmed dead today as heavy rains pounded southwest Japan, prompting floods and landslide warnings and orders for 670,000 people to seek safety. Nearly a million more people were advised to leave their homes after the country's weather agency raised the alert to its highest level for parts of northern Kyushu. The emergency warning is issued if there's a significant likelihood of catastrophes. We now take a break and return with news in business.